As Drew dies. Uh, hello. Hey, ho. hey, Drew's dying right Sorry. now, but it's okay. <laughs> hello, everyone. What's up? It's uh, after drill. That's right. Beef here. Drew. As always, uh, thanks to our friends at the UPS store. That's right. In Ponte Vedra Beach. Located at 830 A1A North in Tournament Plaza. Locally owned and operated by our friends, the Duncans. Serving the community for the last 25 years. All your printing needs, whether it be business cards, yard signs, planners, brochures, you name it. They got you over there at the UPS store in Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida. You can reach them at 904-285-2345. That's 904-285-2345. Of course, we missed Drew yesterday. He was off. Yes. Parts unknown. He was probably, I believe Drew was responsible for guarding the frosted podium mm-hmm. before the uh, Ohio State press Something conference. Something like that. It seemed like a high value item as it yeah. tweeted specifically about the frosted podium as it was yeah. being put into place. I kept getting updates uh, throughout the day. Uh, basically, just another character just kept showing up at the meetings. It was something else. It was weird. Man. Urban's there. Urban's his there, wife's there. there. Shelly's there. People are now on right. the lawn. Right. Uh, they brought Nuts. a Ouija board. They're trying to commune with yeah. Aaron Hernandez. It was, it was very strange. Oh my God. No, it was uh, <laughs> it was uh, it was a weird press conference, and it seemed like it's a very polarizing subject. Obviously, and uh, the two major contributors on the drill, Dan and Jeff, were very split mm-hmm. in their opinions on the Urban Meyer situation. Uh, I probably find myself aligning more with Dan mm-hmm. uh, than I do with Jeff on this. In that, I feel like. Uh, you know, Urban seems like he knew a lot more than it's being let on, and I feel like... I just can't believe he survived it, I'll be honest school, with you. you know, I, I'm not saying I thought he deserved to be fired necessarily, uh, but I would not have been at all surprised had he been fired Like this, this. This is a quote. Uh, as for Myers' comments at Big Ten Media Day, qu- quote, while those denials were plainly not accurate, Coach Meyer did not, in our view, deliberately lie. I don't really know what Ohio State's definition of lying is. Well, and they crafted this very, <laughs> I mean, it was well put together. They tried. Uh, I'll give it to them. They tried. They created this bulletproof shield of this impenetrable yeah. for Urban. Because uh, uh, now he could say he didn't deliberately lie, he doesn't remember, and he's on medication that affects his memory. So not mm-hmm. anything that ever goes wrong at Ohio State those are, you know, your go-to defenses now. And and you know what? Worst case scenario, if you know everything's really about to hit the fan and uh, you just got to get out, you can just fake a heart attack again. Go to the ticker. So It's always dependable. Until good stuff, it's not. Herbs. Good stuff, man. So, I mean, for the next few weeks, it's uh, pizza time for Herbs. We'll, uh, we'll catch some Papa John's and uh, oh, yeah. sit back and him kick and, it. Him and Papa John's are aligning perfectly. What I if? <laughs> I don't know if you saw this yesterday, Drew, but... Uh, John Schnatter, the former Papa John, uh, <laughs> launched his own, like, for lack of a better term, like a truther website where okay. he could just kind of unfiltered Papa John thoughts. Wow. <laughs> so he could just Everybody, get it out there. That's, mu- that's must read stuff. <laughs> and, uh, maybe, unfiltered Papa. Maybe it's like a filter, maybe it's an outlet for herbs. Wow. Maybe okay. herbs could take to the Papa John truther site. Herbs. To get yeah. his side Start out. Start your there. own little blog, Herbsky. Herbs. Or something. What's truth, up, man? The truth from herbs. It could truth be like from herbs. Offshoot. But here's um, the uh, problem is, is herbs might get on there a little too heavy on the medication one day and bop on there and say some things maybe you shouldn't say. Thing. He's got plausible deniability right. because if he gets on there and says something he shouldn't have said, Herbs honestly, it was the meds. Herbs he doesn't would, remember saying. Herbs would probably just pull a Colangelo and be like, "Well, that was my wife." I didn't deliberately. Lie, <laughs> I was on the meds. I was on the meds. Who knows what I said? And honestly, any tweets or, or texts or anything, it was just my wife, and she'll she'll uh, back me up on that. Yeah, okay. she'll back me up on that. Okay. it's fine. What if you should go like full Borat and start doing that? It's my wife. It's my wife. It's my wife. <laughs> It's a Shelly. It's a bizarre. Shelly teaches at the university, by the way. You don't think kids are gonna be like, "Hey, Shelly, hey, what about herbs?" The hell, Shelly. <laughs> Shelly, why do you have to? Why do you have to scrub the text, Shell? What's going on, Shell? <laughs> why do she's, we have to scrub the text? She's having a class about like integrity and right. class and all the and they're like, "Uh, uh hey, Miss Maya." Hi. Hello, hi. We I'm all here. saw what happened. Hello, hello, hi. My name is Gene. I'm a sophomore. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, about the text. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody who doesn't give a flying uh, f about football uh, just wants funny. to bury Miss Meyer. Uh, that'd be bad. Good stuff. Uh, yeah. So on top of that, uh, it's a tremendous anniversary around these parts. Not for anybody mm. here at the radio station, but one of our favorite people mm. uh, to poke fun at, but also root for uh, Blake Bortles. Yes. Happy first birthday. 
to the death of your NFL career. Mm -hmm. uh, it was this day last year that Blake Bortles lost his starting job with the Jaguars. Good uh, stuff. Uh, this day, August 23rd, 2017, Blake Bortles was, it was announced that he'd been benched for Chad Henney uh, ahead of the third preseason game, that Henney was going to start and that Bortles could, it would still be a competition, but that Henney would get the first team reps. And, uh, you know, the rest is history. Bortles went out and... Uh, was good enough in that third preseason game, got sure. the job back, and, you know, the rest of you know, a 10 and 6 season and an AFC title game. Uh, you know, say what you will about Blake, but the one thing no one can knock Blake for is the dude has always, always, always answered the call uh, during times of adversity. Mm -hmm. He's never deflected, he's never given you coach speak or generalities. Uh, he, he sits there, he talks about what's going on, he's honest about it, uh, and, and clearly he's a guy who criticism is not a major concern for sure. him. Uh, now, you know, or at least external criticism. He's, mm -hmm. he's obviously, he listens to his coaches, but media criticism, criticism from his peers in the league, et cetera. Which, by uh, the way, is great, because if that wasn't the case, he'd probably be out of the league right now. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. if he was Blaine Gabbert, if, if Blaine Gabbert got the kind of heat that Bortles got from media and his peers. I don't know what he would have done. Yeah. Probably fetal position, crawl into a little hole in the ground somewhere and just mm. go away. Mm. Uh, which is essentially what Gabbard's done at this point in his NFL career with stops in Arizona. Speaking of now. which, I had a... I had a uh, What's he, Tennessee now? Spirited conversation, by the way, at work yesterday. Uh, young lad, obviously, had had a couple of drinks, so he's very fired up. Wearing a Dolphins hat. Uh, starts yelling at me about the Dolphins, blah, blah, blah. I tell him, in my uh, humble opinion, I think they probably have the worst roster in the NFL, if not pretty close. You know, 31, 30. There's an argument to be made. Yeah. Not a <laughs> like, group. You got, I'm it's the, not a strong man, collection of talent. He goes on to say that they're going to whoop, whoop us in week 14. I say the only way you're whooping us is if, uh, honestly, we're resting our starters because we've clinched the division that early. <laughs> uh, goes on to basically talk about Blake Bortles. I'm sure. Said, you got Ryan Tannehill. Played wide receiver in college. He then goes to tell me, no, Ryan Tannehill played tight end. Untrue. Friend. Untrue. Um, played wide receiver. Wide out of <laughs> um, but basically, his big thing was was that uh, uh, Tannehill was just worlds better than Bortles. Yeah, that's not, uh, and that is not true. I just don't understand this kind of outside look uh, in the NFL uh, by fans and all that. Bortles is so terrible. Yeah, I mean, it's not that I think, think Bortles is some, you know, great uh, yeah. thing or anything. No. But it... Look, Bortles is, I, in my opinion, Bortles is a top, I think he's like 20th. He's like 20th out of... Tannehill think, Hill v. Bortles is not the hill to go no, die on. I think you could uh, make it, around 20, you can start making arguments for him. Sure. Now, again, uh, there's going to be some situations where people can make arguments against him, and it's really just going to be a matter of opinion. Like, for instance, people could say things like Teddy Bridgewater, people could say things like Marcus Mariota... Again, though, the whole Marcus Mariota thing and all that, it's like, Mariota, I think, threw, uh, I mean, a ton of picks last year, and Bortles' numbers were just flat out better, but yet people will sit there and be like, well, Mariota's just... No, Mariota has Bortles. plenty of issues himself. Yeah, I'm like, uh, dude, I mean, yeah. again, it's going to come down to what you want to make the argument for whoever you want to make the argument for. Uh, there's no, other than the top tier of guys, you know, everybody kind of just ends up near that 20 to 20 to back end of NFL starters kind of just... There's not a lot that separates them. Yeah, I mean, what do you guys think? Hit us up in the comments. Uh, you know, where is uh, I think he's like a, I personally, his peers? I'd say he's around twenty, and I think yeah. his absolute ceiling when he's playing his best is somewhere around uh, and being a little anywhere from like fifteen to seventeen. Like that's his that's his career ceiling. I don't think he's ever going to be any better than that. Yeah, he's probably middle of the pack. I, I mean, he's but, just a middle of the pack guy. But when you have the defense that you have and right, have a guy like Fournette, you really you don't need you don't need an elite quarterback. No, I mean it would be it'd be nice. It'd sure. be nice. <laughs> it'd be yeah. great. It'd be it's, nice. It'd be terrific. Great. Go for it, Blake. <laughs> yeah. Go for elite status. But like uh, what? I, I wonder what the Jags would look like had they have gone. Deshaun Watson first round and Dalvin Cook in the second instead of getting Leonard for Well, yeah, that's a question. Uh, I know? mean, just quite, you know, little things like that. Uh, just interesting. And it'll always be uh, a question with Blake. Yeah, sure. because Because he's never going to be 
one of those top five guys that you talk right. about that's just, you know, hands right. down, you know, this dude is the bomb. I mean, it's, the bottom line is, is, is if the Jags don't win the Super Bowl or uh, this year, really, and, and I know that's just a bold thing to say, but if they don't win the Super Bowl, people everywhere, even if you don't watch Jag games, are just going to be like, well, it was Blake Bortles who was holding them down. Right. And it's like, really, uh, we don't win that game in Pittsburgh without Bortles. Uh, no. I don't think we win the Buffalo game. Buff- they may not beat Buffalo. They probably don't beat he, Buffalo because he ran all he over the ran place. He like crazy. Uh, and really, he played great in the New England game when they actually kind of let him. Yeah. <laughs> so Yeah. Look, I mean, I'm not tr- over here trying to cape for Bortles. But, exactly. I'm not uh, I'm not sitting here saying he's the man or anything. But it's, yeah, I, it's a bad look if you're a Dolphin yeah. fan trying sure. to prop up Ryan Taney. I, just, like I, I get the, uh, the reason why special. I bring that up is because this is now... Probably the fourth or fifth Dolphin fan who said, like, who's come at me guns blazing. And I just don't get where's, if there's any Dolphin fans watching, I just, I don't understand where that confidence comes from. It's weird. It's very but they odd. always have it in the offseason. It's weird. It's a Dolphin fan thing. It's, a, it's very They're odd. rationally confident going into yeah. every season. And then they're reminded again that they're a, a trash team. Mm-hmm. With a trash roster. And the fun thing also that and I had to remind him, uh, <laughs> he's going on and on about, well, we, uh, come talk to me when you win a Super Bowl. I said, well, you've been a franchise a little bit longer than right. us. But I not mean, to mention, you know, just out of curiosity, what happened right. when we met in the playoffs? 72 was a long time ago, guys. Yeah. I mean, just, uh, just uh, saying. And uh, uh, full disclosure, this kid was uh, nowhere near around in 72. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so. yeah, and that's the thing I don't get. It's like, you know, talk to me about... When the when the two teams have coexisted, because mm. it seems like the few times they've it, the argument pretty much stopped once the kid then exchanged didn't wanna, hostilities. He didn't want to. Yeah, he was going on and on. Didn't want to talk about last year. Wanted to talk about the year before when they were in fact in the playoffs and we were three and thirteen. And I said, I mean, what are we just gonna keep? Going? What are you doing right now? And it's just, I was like, I thought we were talking about this year, and then he's like, well, we're not talking about last year. And then he's like, but well, we could talk about two years ago. I was like, oh my goodness, sure. Just also, a little after drill event right yeah. there is what this is. Event session for Drew. Do you feel better? A little bit. Okay. I do. Okay. How do you guys feel? How do you guys feel? <laughs> you feel better now that Drew is vented? <laughs> do you feel like you live vicariously uh-huh. through Drew and vented yes. as well? Yes. Uh, yeah. I'll so, Venmo you all one cent for your time uh, kind of counseling me through this. Thank uh, you. So Saturday night, preseason game number two, the dress rehearsal, mm. as it were, for the, uh, for the Jags. Uh, big upset. On the uniform front, as I saw on Twitter, that they'll they'll be in the teal over whites again. Wow! Okay. I thought they were going to bust out the all black. black since yeah. that's going to be the, the standard home uni, but mm. uh, not to be, mm. not to be. Big Cats will be in a, a teal again Saturday night down at right. TIA Bank Field, taking on the Falcons. Uh, no Julio. If you're a big uh, Julio Jones Devonte Freeman fan, yeah. sorry. Uh, not playing. They're not playing. <laughs> uh, I think they said that neither one of them are going to play at all preseason. They're just I think that's what they said, yeah. Train and be ready for the regular season, which, you know, Whatever. I, you can't blame them for yeah. that. <laughs> but, you know, I, I hope. I've, I've said time and time again, I think the preseason is stupid. So. I Yeah, I mean, it's One really, game. You can play one preseason game. You can play one game. preseason game and have the starters go a half and be like, okay, we're warmed up. You could pull all the people in the NFL, and the only people who would like the preseason would be the people who aren't going to make the team. Right. <laughs> Those would be the players who like the right. preseason. Right, the players who need to get tape yeah. for other teams to yeah. possibly sign them. That's it. That's what they need. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you got to be, if you're like Jalen Ramsey, you don't yeah. care about the And preseason. me personally, uh, I know you guys haven't particularly seen me in person other than this Facebook Live little window. Uh, I am not an NFL prospect, nor will I ever be. Um, I simply don't care about the preseason. It's too bad, too. He's got the build. <laughs> it's, too, it's too bad. He's got an athletic build. <laughs> but... Unfortunately, I went like height and weight. Yeah, not quite. NFL Just about a hundred pounds and a foot off, and yeah. I'd have been there. And you'd have been there, man. You're the champion. <laughs> and boy, would watch you, out. And boy, would Dan Hick have been un, <laughs> unbelievably intolerable. Imagine somehow, some way. By the way, if Boy King sprouts up to like six five, and all of a sudden he's it's like a things. prospect. Yeah, just a pro, like a like a legit, you know, it's just like a like, like a, a le- three star. Yeah, like it's a like, literally like you could look him up on a recruiting yeah, site. He's a three like, star quarterback. Rivals. Yeah, right. He's like a one star. Bro, one star. <laughs> right. <laughs> one star. Right. If it just says like you know, na, but he's up there. Offers from FIU and Toledo. Like, My man. You're like yes. Go rocket. Go. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he'll be intolerable. And that's fine. That's we'll fine. The kid. We love the boy king. Go boy king. Go boy king, go. Go get that NFL money, buddy. Take care of everyone. Please. <laughs> We're begging. We're begging. At this point. I'm doing the same thing with the petite. Uh, come on, Every petite. time he goes out there, I'm like, he swings his little plastic bat. I'm like, that's right. get it through the zone. Yeah. Get, get it in play. Get back through the zone, petite. Get that. No, that's a foul tip. We don't want that. <laughs> you want it in the zone. Get it out there. Good contact. 
Uh, Go to exit velocity. My whole life is riding on you. Keep going. I didn't say that. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. This is this is my retirement. <laughs> yeah. You are my 401k. Please, Matisse. I need you to come through. Yeah. Uh, that, on that note, I anyway. bid you a fond adieu. Yeah. Uh, it's another award-winning edition of After Drill. That's right. I apologize for the abrupt uh, ending to yesterday's After Drill, by the way. Uh, it just came to a sudden stop mm. because my phone started ringing. Oh, dear. After Drill. And I had to, full disclosure, I had to take it. It was my kid's doctor. Okay. So I had to take Pretty it. Pretty fair. So apologies. Sorry. But uh, don't worry. I didn't say anything good afterwards. Okay. You know? So you didn't miss anything. That's that's, that's the kind of sell we do. Right yeah. after Drill. It sucked anyways. <laughs> Uh, uh, so hope you come back tomorrow for more of this terrible program. <laughs> Woo! Love you, Googans. Bye!